represents the earliest worldwide stance against sexual violence, especially violence against women. Take Back the Night events began in the 1960s in Belgium and in England. That part surprised me because I thought it was the 70s. <laughs> um, and they were protests about women not being safe walking down the street alone. In 1973 in the United States, women at the University of Southern Florida dressed in black sheets and held broomsticks and marched through the campus <laughs> demanding a women's center. Of all things, they wanted a women's center. In 1975, a crowd in Philadelphia held a Take Back the Night event to protest the murder of a microbiologist walking near her home after work. And we know that this week there was a woman assaulted in London walking home. In the 1970s, San Francisco had a number of rallies in protest of snuff pornography and violence against women. These early events have grown into hundreds of events on college campuses and in communities of all sizes and locations. Like you saw, the unifying theme is the protest of sexual violence and support for victims. <coughs> the public behavior our march had to endure three years ago, that's why we're back and that's why we march. It has to end. We are really, really honored tonight to have Nicole with us. In July 2004, Nicole was newly married and had recently begun working at a Catholic church as an office manager. Having previously obtained a Master's of Science in Biology, Nicole had been teaching at a local university in college, but had left both these positions to prepare her application to medical school. Nicole had hoped for a quiet summer of studying and spending time with her husband. But soon after starting the short-term job at the church, Nicole's life changed forever. After only a few weeks at the church, Nicole was repeatedly sexually harassed, sexually assaulted, and ultimately raped by the Nigerian priest who had, who had been hired to cover the summer holidays of the parish priest. Over the next 10 years, Nicole and her husband Mark endured a relentless and often humiliating fight in the civil service system. They finally reached an out-of-court settlement with the church in September 2014 in a civil suit that they had filed. Nicole is still waiting for the criminal justice system to catch up to the priest. Nicole tells her story publicly and hopes that by sharing her experience, others will gain insight into what it is like to experience sexual violence. By opening up and speaking about what happened to her, Nicole is overcoming the voicelessness that she felt as a victim and regaining her strength as a survivor. Nicole never realized her childhood dream of becoming a doctor, but she does work as a consultant and in healthcare and supporting individuals with dementia. I'd like to introduce Nicole Schadenberg.